Hello and welcome to the Watopia Cup race live here on Zwift. I'm Rebecca Charlton and alongside me for what should be a fast and furious race is one of the stars of this year's Kiss Super League, John Mould of Madison Genesis. Firstly, a very warm welcome to the commentary box. Um, this, of course, is an original one for Zwift. What do you make of tonight's route? Yeah, it's the it's the first one that was ever raced on and used, and was the first first route. So um, there's no excuse. Every rider out there should know every little uh, every road, every little cobblestone, and where exactly where everything is. Very true. And with that in mind, here is exactly what awaits the riders tonight. Watopia Cup will be fought out on Zwift's first ever route, Watopia Hilly. At just under 37 kilometres total distance with sprints and KOM points on each of the four laps and the full suite of power-ups available, tactics will play a huge part. With less than a kilometre in their legs, the riders hit the KOM climb for the first time. It's only 900 metres long at an average of 5.5%, but that early in the race it could catch a few riders out. There'll be no time to recover though, a fast descent and last along the cobbled village streets mean there's just over four kilometres before the fast men will be looking for their points. Anyone looking to use that to launch a race winning attack will still have about 3k to go, including the climb up the S's if they have to hold on for victory along Ocean Boulevard. That is the route that awaits the riders, and that comprises 13 community teams tonight. Canyon ZCC in there, VZR cycling team, Rowan King once again fielding a team, Team Experimental, Team Draft, Fusion, ECT, plenty to look out for. And within those squads, there are some interesting names in the field to look out for again tonight. Alex West of uh, Canyon ZCC, he was second overall in the KISS Super League behind Ian Bibby and won the Trofeo Bologna. Uh, Ollie Jones of Team Turbo from New Zealand also, he won the Zwift Academy overall in 2017. He was fourth overall in the KISS Super League as well. And John, plenty more to look at. Yeah, it's a, it's a field with a really big strength and depth, but um, you know, with, with about 15 seconds before the start now, make sure everyone's got a warm up. It, this because of the course, with the top of the KOM coming after 1.8k, it's pretty much a five-minute flatter effort from the gun. They're all going to be ready. They're, they have to be on it. If you're not on it now, you're, you're going to be dropped, and that's your race over, as you see. As you see, in the owl like the saddle and sprinting already. <laughs> and the race is off. The riders are underway for the Watopia Cup on this very original course that people know so, so well and as predicted, straight on from the gun. Now, this is so crucial to be ready for it, to be warmed up and not to be caught napping. Yeah, definitely. They're all uh, all completely really aware of it. And uh, as you can see, really high watts still going out. And pretty much, if you haven't warmed up, you... We all, they all knew on the start line, five minutes, absolutely flat out. And then you, you then after those five minutes, you look around and see who's left. But you have to be aware of it. You, already it's starting. It's already really, really fast. And Jarrett's hurts there, putting uh, the hammer down pretty early on. And as you say, it's just the case of the expectation that it is going to go like that. And we've got so many riders in this field of 71 that are very aware that this is exactly what they need to do. But when you first got on to the world of Zwift, um, how much of a learning curve was it to get those starts right? 100%. Is it you, uh, you don't make the mistake twice. You make sure you're on it and you, uh, you're flat out from the gun straight away, as, as everyone is seems to be uh, really aware tonight. Let's talk a little bit more about the route that uh, is awaiting the riders and is well underway already because, of course, it goes straight up that KOM and then we've got all important sprint points up for grabs as well. Yeah, of course. You um, you know, as the as the riders now are hitting that first first incline and it's getting really steep, they're all just thinking about getting in the right place and then over the top, they can battle out for the important sprint points later on. Certainly, and it really does ramp up, and it's just an all-out effort, isn't it, on the climbs that we see here. Uh, Adam Duggleby of Team Rowan King, 528 watts at the moment, 165 beats per minute there in his heart rate. That's really going hard now. Everyone at the front, you can see Alex West moving up 8.5 watts per kilo. And look at Dougal Adam Duggleby there, 560 watts. He's been at that for the past 30 seconds. It's really, really on, really. Everyone's all out. Everyone knows. 
And you can see the rider splintering at the back as it goes straight up this climb. I mean, I know that we always expect it to go quickly from the start, but with the gradient coming in so soon, <laughs> this is a really tough one. It's flat out, and as you see the riders now, it looks like it kind of flattens off, but it's still around 4%. But because it's been up to 12%, this feels like flat. As you see, th only 300 metres now until the top of the KOM. It certainly is. Soren Bay, seeing his data, 547 watts there, 168 beeps per minute, <laughs> and everyone very much on it. Yeah, 200 metres to go, they're already starting to look for the sprint. If you want to win that KOM point, this is it. You're going to have to get on top, and you have to put, really put the watts out here. As you see, Hertz really putting the power down, and, she's, and he's got a gap. And it is Hertz that leads the way up this, but it looks like it could be all change as we come into the top of this KOM here. And it looks like Hertz has taken that, but it's a real fast time. One minute 32, they, they ascended that KOM, which isn't messing around. They're really pressing on, and the race is on from the gun. And a lot of these riders, um, throughout the likes of the KISS Super League and these races uh, throughout the classics as well, they actually really know their competitors really well. We're just getting a confirmation of that KOM there. Andreas Hertz taking the maximum points, which is five on those intermediates. Uh, Lionel taking three, Spencer two, and Brad taking one there. As we see another move from Beck here. Yeah, Beck's just stretching it out over the top. He, he didn't get in the top four of the KOM, and he's probably just gone straight over the top. As you can see, as the, as the view looks back, all the little gaps there are just, just coming back together as everyone's just recovering from that big effort they've all just made. Yeah, and if you look at the sort of data that these riders can put out, looking back, I mean, and Andreas Hertz has... Uh, Got a pretty impressive watts per kilo when he unleashes his sprint. <laughs> it's perfect now. This is it's kind of they've all got over that KOM now and they start the descent. This is when they can all have a breath. They know they've they've warmed up well and this has really kept them all in the bike race. Of course, anyone there, you're not going to win it straight away with 35k to go. But you're definitely going to lose it if you're not on and not all aware and are ready to ready to get stuck into the race. We'll talk more about that tactical approach in just a moment, but first let's take a look back at that first sprint point of the day. And uh, here we have it. It's an impressive uh, turn of speed from Hertz there. Yeah, perfectly timed. He's just gone straight over the top and, and took the points. So uh, he's definitely up for that KOM jersey. So it'd be interesting to see next time round if he goes for it again. Adam Duggleby of Rowan King, a rider that we've seen animate already and putting in some impressive power. Uh, he's a rider you know quite well. Yeah, he's um, part of the British Cycling uh, Paralympic team. He rides on the front of the tandem. And uh, yeah, he's, um, of course, not, not with a partner on his back today, but he's um, definitely uses Zwift and races on it quite a lot. So he's definitely an experienced one. And it's, it's perfect for his type of training that he does. And it, and it is brilliant to see so many people really embracing the world of Swift and actually just honing the skills in so much, which, of course, is something you've done yourself. Uh, for anyone that's joining us for the first time and isn't so well versed in the tactical approach, um, could you talk us through the likes of the power-ups, the aero, the draft, the feather? Yeah, so there's five power-ups. Um, the aero power-up, which is, uh, gives you an aerodynamic advantage for 15 seconds. And the draft power-up, which is a little truck symbol above the top, which makes it easier on the wheel. And then the feather, which, uh, of course, makes you lightweight and um, is perfect for a KOM. And then the invisibility, which uh, you, you uh, disappear off your competitor's screens <laughs> and they can't see you. And then, of course, the new one, the burrito, which uh, makes you completely undraftable. So it's a perfect time. If you want to be at the front, you use that burrito and attack and no one can use you and get on your, get on your wheel and get any advantage from that. And there's a lot of riders uh, still in this main group here, all looking around, making sure that they are not caught napping, as we say. And... Uh, just looking for the right time to use the elements like the uh, the aero, the draft, the feather, invisibility, and the burrito as well. As we see a huge attack from Adam Duggle. We've just spoken about him. We know the caliber he brings to these races, and there is a gap forming there. Yeah, straight away. I think um, everyone should be aware of it, but he's um, slowly opening a gap. And if he keeps on riding like he is, slowly that gap will go out. But um, I think everyone's aware of that. There's a few power-ups being used there, a feather in the background helping to bring, that, bring Duggleby's attack back. So we are on lab one of four, which is the entirety of tonight's race. 31.6 kilometers remaining. A big attack there from Rowan King's Adam Duggleby. Of course, as you said, John, a member of the Great Britain cycling team uh, as a tandem pilot on the Paralympic squad. Um, brilliant to see him fielding the racing and bringing so much experience to this group of riders as well. Andreas Hertz impresses from him so far as well. 
Yeah, and of course, with Rowan King, they've got Adam Duggleby, and then uh, the Welsh rider Hefn Evans, former Criterium champ, along with a uh, Norwegian rider, Christian Killenberg, which is, um, which I've been told he's a top sprinter and he'll be looking for the win tonight. <laughs> I think there's a bit of a nickname there as well, isn't there? Yeah, he's the <laughs> Christian the Killer Killenberg, which is, um, you know, he, his, his uh, nickname, if anything, to go by. He should be um, up, for a, up for a big win today and uh, kill off all his opponents. <laughs> And we saw that uh, KOM very soon on in the race, but we have a sprint coming up now. And as you see, they're all just trying to, if you, if you want to go for that sprint competition, you need to be at the front of this group. You go across these cobbles and it'll just turn left and that's where it's 300 meters to go. So if you're thinking about it, you look at Doug will be right now, the perfect position on the front. He might be on the front and pushing some wind, but he's still the perfect time. As you see, the invisibility <laughs> power-ups going on the front, this is the perfect time to be using them. Ollie Jones in second place, just getting overtaken there, unfortunately, by Bird. But Bird looks like he's got 200 metres to go. This is it. Bird's really pressing on now. Ollie Jones trying to come back, but it looks like Bird's going to hold on with 100 metres to go. Flat out, 10.6 watts per kilo. And it's perfectly timed. There's three riders really going for it, and it looks like Bird's taking it. Well, it looked like... Bruce Bird led that one out, absolutely stunning. We could see the uh, green marking on the road when that sprint started, just see it there. And uh, yeah, it looks like he took that. We'll get confirmation of those points in just a moment. But let's talk about the sprints as well. So Bruce Bird taking five points, Ollie Jones three, Lionel Orbison uh, taking two there. Adam Doug will be uh, in fourth place in that sprint, uh, taking one point. But he'll be looking at this race overall as well as those intermediates as these three riders, a tactic we so often see have gone for the sprint kept the hammer down and actually are forming a bit of a gap there. Yeah, they've got the gap just from going for that sprint and that's just something they can ride up this little drag straight after the sprint point either a little bit easier and make everyone else work for it or if they just carry on riding it makes it harder for everyone to come back to them as they have. They've all come back together and this is the start of the S's where it really, we're not expecting the last lap, the, the attack's going to go coming into the finish and it's the perfect launch pad for anyone who wants to, wants to win tonight. And those sprint points, I mean, it's it's a leg tester, but it also kind of gives you a bit of bragging rights, doesn't it? And shows everyone what you're capable when when you unleash the sprint. Yeah, definitely. You're, um, if you've got good legs, I, I always like trying to save them, but it's always nice to just test them out and see what your opponents, how fast they react. And it, it gives you a bit of confidence when you get a good gap and you can, you can sit up and just take a breath and come back to the peloton. And a few gaps forming there but very quickly closed down everyone in this field so experienced in Zwift as we get a replay there of that sprint point and that was really close Jones nearly nicked it on the line but um, obviously both of them are really keen for that uh, sprint competition today and with three more sprints to go it's going to be it's not over yet it's <laughs> certainly not. Still on lap one of four. All very much still to play for. 28.8 kilometres to go on the Watopia Cup course tonight. Andreas Hertz, impressive ride from him. Uh, Adam Duggleby as well. We've talked about them a lot and a really good first sprint point as well. Um, what do you make of this course? What's your tactical approach when you ride this one? Um, I, I always like a good sprint, so it's um, it's a nice it's a nice course. It really um, really hurts the legs, and you, you you know you let the course do the damage and let that, that take the sting out of everyone's legs. And then with this fast finish, which we get a preview now, of you come down really really fast. You want to leave it late. You want to use the momentum that you get behind in the wheel, and then rush as late as possible. So I I'd, I'd like to, if you've got a lead out, you get on that, and then you uh, you jump over the top with around 200 meters to go. And we see the very calm, smooth avatars on our screen at the moment, but what we're not getting a glimpse of is just the uh, pain in the faces when we see those watts really increase. Yes, yeah, it's, it's always uh, with Zwift, you don't know how hard you're, you're, everyone's going, so everyone's working really hard, especially off that start. Everyone's in a, in a hurt box at home on, that, on their turbo, sweating all over your bike, and um, yeah, it's, it, it's what makes it unique and makes it more fun, to be honest. Just seeing the moves keep going here. Everyone wanting to mark each other. And uh, we're seeing some more power-ups being used here. Yeah, so, um, of course, every time you go across the finish line, a KOM or a sprint, you get a chance of getting a new power-up. So, of course, if you don't want your power-up, if, if you've got a draft, draft power-up, it's probably the one you wouldn't want to use at the end of a race. So you want to use your, your power-ups and hopefully spin the wheel and get a new one as we just see the data of james phillips 282 watts so that's um you know it's low zone three 160 beats per, 
beats for a minute. It looks like it's nice and steady there, but that's still really pressing on. But uh, James Phillips was second place in the uh, Zwift National Championships earlier on in the year, and um, he's a he's a really strong rider. He's actually um, he's he's a Welsh rider, and he uh, represented Wales at two Commonwealth Games playing badminton. Oh. And he's come across, and he's um, yeah, he's definitely shown what you can do <laughs> on a bike. Certainly is. Uh, KOM records. We uh, see that Soren Bay in this race holds the uh, record up there. A minute 25, and trust me, I've, I've run it a few times and I've got nowhere near a minute 25. I think my best is 132, so it uh, really shows the calipers in this. This is a real fast, and if, if you're going for it and you're a climber, this is a, this is a, this is a great chance to uh, use it to your advantage and hopefully try and get a win. Yeah, a 900 metre climb there, just to put that time into context. And we saw when the guys came up for that first sprint, we saw a lot of invisibility uh, drafts being, sorry, power ups, not drafts, invisibility power ups being used. Yeah, as you can see, it's the time to use them. If you want to use the attack, it's always good. But you can see, of course, feathers always being used on a KOM. This is the, that's the best power up you can get, and it's really steep right now, around 8%, 9%. And Hertz hit it first, the winner of the KOM the last time round. And he's really putting the hammer down again. Yeah, Andreas Hertz, <laughs> ever present at the front on a hill. And they're just coming up this incline now that we keep talking about. Straight after crossing the line into lap two of four now. Hertz definitely putting in the hurt. <laughs> yeah, he's putting everyone else in the hurt locker, is Hertz. <laughs> so perfect timing and perfect perfect name for someone who's really going to... As you can just see, the, the gaps are opening up at the back. And you just hit this bit of false flat now and you... You think it's you think it's nearly f at the top, but it's, trust me, it's a long way around this left-hander, then to the right, and that's only 200 metres until the top. As you see, loads of power-ups being used. They're all going the aero power-up going off on the front from Segbruch, and he's she's, he's really got a gap, 300 metres to go. He's really going for this KOM. Certainly is, <laughs> and uh, using everything in the bag to get away there, and it's certainly working. But as Hertz, you can see them coming over the top. He's really closing that gap. He won that first KOM. He's going to have to make sure he tries to get back. Well, you can just see the sight of Hertz there in the blue kit. And he really is going for it yet again. And it is Hertz that takes that KOM on the second lap. Just seeing those power numbers shoot up there and, and just seeing that gradient kick in. And that, I think that was a minute 32. So it wasn't as fast as we as uh, Bay had gone in his, to in his personal best. But that really is going going, 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 and you can see the gap and the damage that has been done just for the, the three that were sprinting has really blown that race to pieces behind. It really has. Andreas Hertz taking the maximum points on the KOM there, taking five, and uh, another impressive display from him. And um, we're seeing the burrito used now. Yeah, this is perfect. No one can, no one can draft off Hertz now on the front. So everyone's trying to close that wheel, and he's just going to hold that gap. No one's getting any closer. But as you can see, 187 beats per minute from Anderson. Really, really, that's t that's that's flat out. That's zone six. And if everyone here now that you've got back to that front group, if you're feeling good, you're going to go straight through. But with 25k to go, <laughs> it's a you're going to be a brave man if you're going to take it on from now. So everyone's going to take a break, have a drink and get stuck in and ready for the rest of the race. And how much do you actually have an opportunity to <laughs> look at what your competitors are doing and have a look at everybody else's data? Or when, when it's a course like this, is it just keeping your head down? With a course like this, th there's not much time to really um, look around and see the better, how, y how your competitors are going. You, you just have to concentrate on yourself and make sure um, you're still in the wheel, to be honest. You don't want to uh, you don't want to be losing the wheel and, and any bit of loss of concentration might cost you. Certainly is all about that, isn't it? Not uh, ever letting up and letting anyone get away and then indeed use a power up in the process as well. Just going to have a little look back at that KOM for the second time as we uh, reached lap two. And there it is. Hurt, putting everyone in the hurt locker and taking the second uh, KOM of the day. And just uh, just coming back on, you can see on the top right hand side of your screen, he's the, it looks like De Viola is sprinting back on. He was second in that KOM, and he's just on his way back to the group, but on his own. And there's a, a big group of around 30, 30 riders in that front. It's going to be a really big effort to get back. It certainly is, but uh, I guess at that point you know that you really just have to <laughs> put it all in to make that happen. You've got no, you've got no, over. yeah, exactly. You've got no choice, and he, he's done it perfectly. He's back on on the descent, so um, yeah, hats off. You've um, 
you've, you've rectified the mistake you've made and you're back in the race. And we do see the likes of Hertz um, put in those big efforts, but then just manage to recover time and time again to still be there in the thick of the action at the end. Um, how do you really maximise that respite when it is a relatively short race and, and very much on? There's a few little tactics you can do. You can see some of the riders, their avatars aren't pedalling at the moment. But um, in Zwift, if the, if, the, if the bunch is going over 50k an hour and the, and the descent is more than 5%, you can freewheel and stay in the wheel. It's all that experience, the little bits of uh, any, any respite you can take, you need to take them when you can, especially when it's uh, so being full on. It's 17 minutes into the race, but with 23k to go, it's still a long way to go. Well, we are down to 31 riders in this group. Just to give some context to the pace and the uh, power to weight that is being put out here. We started with 71 in that main group and it's now done to a whittled 31. Yeah, straight away, that's, that's only two ascents of the KOM. So with two more to go, I think we could end up with a possibly even a group of four. You saw how easy that front three who went for the KOM could split and when it's uh, when you come out, when you go over the top and it's 7k to go on the final lap you might be more keen to carry on and hold that gap until the end so ollie jones come through there bring out 2.4 watts per kilo at the moment but you know when we saw that KOM, when we were seeing some some very high numbers and we can just see people taking that opportunity uh, to recover wherever possible. We're on lap two of four now, 22.3 kilometers remaining on the Watopia Cup tonight. A field of 31 riders whittled down from 71. Brilliant uh, KOM action, and we've got another sprint to look forward to as well. Mads Bang Addison there, 246 watts, 163 beats per minute, just trying to get that heart rate back down. Yeah, you can see 100 and 189 watts, 240 watts. It's, it, he's really taking it, taking it easy now, and that whole group is just kind of making the most of this little reset. They know they've all, they know the competitors in this front group now. This is a good, solid group of experienced Zwifters and strong riders. So a group of 31. It's interesting now coming up to that sprint. Ollie Jones made a really big mo move for it last time in Bird, so I, I, th I expect these two will be definitely competing this time around again. Definitely, and we start to see the riders that we expect to unleash it for these sprints. And we talked about those bragging rights, just really testing the legs at these points. And we'll see this sprint come up every lap of four, or on two of four, co of course, now, as they come up to that indicator, the green line. We're seeing the uh, data of Ollie Jones there, 491 watts. We can expect that to keep going up. You see those aero power ups just being lit up. This is the time to go. A burrito being used as well. Perfect timing. Ollie Jones going for it again, it looks like, with Duggleby, who finished third or fourth in that first one as well. And here we go. Coming up to the second sprint of the day. We've got three riders getting away and crossing that line there. It looked like Duggleby was in there. Let's just get confirmation of that. It was Ollie Jones, I think, again, who took the win, which is he uh, finished second in that first one, and he's definitely got some more points on the board for that sprints competition. Certainly has. Confirmation there. Five points for Ollie Jones, who did, 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 did take that. Adam Duggleby taking three points in second there. Lionel two and Jesse one. Yeah, perfect. And then now uh, invisibility, invisibility power up was used. It's always quite hard to say that invisibility. <laughs> but as you see, an attack going over the top, a counter attack from behind. And these riders have just gone for the sprint. You're gassed already. You're going to have to make sure you sprint again to stay in that front group. Well, a move from uh, Brett Wakefield there. In perfect timing now. He's he's kind of got the gap, but he's kind of sat up and he's just he's just taking a break and making everyone else work to get back to his wheel. There's no point trying to keep the pressure on. You've got that little gap. Just make it harder for your for your all the other competitors when you can. Yeah, a big move from Brett Wakefield. Probably a moment that people <laughs> didn't want to have to keep going again. Uh, but it is all about that, isn't it? It's it's the opportunities that people take uh, when they just perhaps either go for the sprint and keep the pressure on, or actually, when everyone sits up a little bit, you use that time to go. Yeah, it's all about if um, it, sometimes with the sprint being that close to the finish, we might not see the winner of today's race going for those sprints. Mm. He might be saving himself and just literally commit just for the race win. So it's always a difficult one, it, it, but as you can see, three, three riders go for that sprint and they've got a gap. 
it could be worked to their advantage, especially the, the riders like Ollie Jones, who's raced on it so much. He knows if he goes for that sprint, gets the gap and commits all the way to the finish. Well, this group significantly reduced. We've got 19.6 kilometers to go here. Andreas Hertz, 2.8 watts per kilo at the moment. We know that we're very likely to see him go again on the third KOM. We're going to have a look back now, though, at the second sprint of the day. And here we have it, just seeing it all wind up. That was the point we saw 100 metres to go before the sprint line. And it's perfect. Now you're just coming through back into the finish. This is around 400 metres to go, just so you know the next time around. 400 metres, 300 metres, you can see that long, fast running. It's really hard to get. You get so much speed, and if you're at the front, you're just going to get bogged down, and everyone's going to rush you, and you've got no chance. So positioning coming into this last sprint is really vital. And, of course, all these riders should have raced on it before, but they get a chance to see it three times before they have to go and fight it out for the win. That's true. I mean, as familiar as this course may be to everybody, uh, each lap you also see what people are un uh, well likely to do and unleash. Definitely there. With 200 metres to go here, this is the time. With two laps to go, you, you start to think, where do I want to start the sprint? If I've got an aero power-up, if I've got a feather power-up, or an invisibility one, they need to just make sure they get the right power-up they think is the best way of them helping them win the race. It certainly is. And we just see the riders crossing that line yet again. And it seems quite a settled group now. That, that th Those 30 riders were quite happy. This is... Um, it's a really strong group, and it, 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 I'd not, I don't expect it to really kick off this time. I think there'll be a lot of riders just waiting and biding their time for the last time up it. So, the KOM points situation now. Andreas Hertz, 10 points. Uh, Spencer's got five, Lionel four, Fabian's got two, and Brad takes one at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see what unfolds as we go up it for the third time. We, of course, now have crossed the line onto lap three of four. Plenty of racing to go, but a very reduced quality group here. 17 kilometres remaining. Yeah, definitely. And, and Hertz with a with a five point lead already in this KOM. If he if he wins it this time, mathematically he won't be able to get caught. So uh, if he wins it this time, he could save himself and be up for the win. Certainly, and we do see riders going for it on these intermediate KOMs and sprints and then finishing it off in superb style as well. But we do quite often see some surprises in Zwift racing, which I always think keeps things very interesting because we can look at somebody's uh, data on paper, but actually tactically we've seen some real unpredictability unfold in these races. Yeah, and look, you can see straight away not many power-ups being used. I think everyone's quite happy. There's one feather, one feather power-up being used. As you can see, Hertz is on the front really laying it out. The winner of the KOM the, fir the first two times over, he's again there. He's moved to the front, he's just slowly drifting back. So it was Andreas Hertz that led that out. You can see him in the familiar blue and yellow kit there on the red bike. And uh, he's sort of absorbed into that group now, but he knows exactly what he's doing. We've seen uh, him really take it on towards that line, just absolutely pouncing on the rivals. But we're seeing the sights of Alex West there, Soren Bay, who we know has a record on this KOM as well. Yeah, and then again, Hurts, perfectly timed again. He's really keen for this KOM, KOM jersey tonight. But um, with this false flat coming up, everyone's still there. That group hasn't really, you haven't lost too many riders. You can just see a du du Adam Duggleby towards the back. And you see loads of loads of Feather Pirates used now. This is really, everyone's a lot more aware. They've used it a lot later than the last time around. As we see, I think it's Christie and Bang on the front. Larson and Davola and, and then of course Hertz is, is going to be in the right place he needs to make sure he wins this KOM if he's got any chance of winning the competition 200 metres to go now till the top of the third KOM of the day we know that Hertz wants to solidify his lead he's currently got 10 points and we're seeing his data 789 watts at the moment 196 beats per minute for Fabian Davola there who is going to take it and it's really close. I think Hertz ended up third, so he scored some more points, which is which is good for him in the KOM competition. I'm not too sure if it was Hertz or Sedgebra over the top, but um, we'll have to wait until see. It was a really close one. Well, 
we will see who took the points. And it was Spencer Sedgbrook who took five points. Fabian Date took three. And it was Andreas Hertz in third there with two points after taking the first two. So he has absorbed points to take him up to 12 points overall. And these three riders at the moment pressing on. But once again, everybody pouncing back on that. They don't want to let that gap get any bigger. Yeah, just a little gap was there, open for a little bit. But I don't think the three riders, of course, they would have gone so hard over that over that KOM. They probably didn't have the legs to keep it moving. As you can see, Davola with 184 beats per minute, he's definitely pressed on and really gone deep over the top of that. So that little bit of respite really made the difference and hopefully he can get back in. As you can see, the uh, draft power up being used by one of the Canyon riders and that's perfect time and take a break and, get, and use that as a recovery time. Yeah, it's brilliant that we can see exactly when they're using them because it's indicated above their head. You can see the draft uh, icon there with the blue and uh, the feathers very noticeable with the green as well. So you always look out for those and the timings of those all importantly as well. It, it, it looks like we only lost two riders over that last KOM. So um, yeah, as you see the replay here, it was uh, Davola really lighting it up and it was perfect time. But then Sedra just running at, her, at him and pipped him just on the line. Perfect time and, and Hertz picking up third place as well. Yeah, Hertz really wanted to go for that, but you know, it really does sap the legs, doesn't it? Soren Bay, 114 watts at the moment, going up just above 200, perhaps a little bit of recovery, <laughs> albeit minimal. Um, but let's talk a bit about that element where there's been a sprint or there's been the, the chase for the KOM and then somebody else hits it again, because that's something you're familiar with with the likes of the points race on the track. I mean, what goes through your head when people just keep hitting it harder and harder and harder and you really don't want to be going for it again and chasing. Yeah, of course, there's always the time to, if you want to win a race, what I've always learned is that you always go, you go as hard as you can when it's really hard because <laughs> that's demoralizing to all your competitors. As you can see, the last time at this KOM now is going to be between Hertz and Sedra. Hertz with 12 points and Sedra with 10. With one KOM to go, it's all down to that last, last KOM points for the overall win. Yeah, well, we said that if Hertz took it, he would have that clear lead but it is still all to play for there we've got a lap remaining of course and seeing that KOM come each and every lap 14.4 kilometers to go now hurts the familiar sight of him at the front there everybody doing everything they can now and yeah as you can see that Rujasin was just freewheeling the whole way down that descent perfectly experienced and just taking a massive break he, he, that recovery could be could win in the race later on Everyone else was pedalling. He was the only one in that group, as you saw, freewheeling, and he's still in that group. Certainly is. That group, I believe, is still 31, actually 29 riders that's gone down to now. So we did lose a couple more across that KOM before. 13.8 kilometres to go now. Everybody looking around, making sure that they don't let anything get away at this point in the race because there's a lot of interest, of course, in keeping this together towards the end. Andreas Hertz makes another move to put himself forward to the front. Yeah, and Hertz is riding really well tonight. Maybe he's doing a good job. He's, he's made it really, really hard on the KOM, and that means the rest of his team can just sit back and don't have to make any effort. So if you, I think he's got Lunkvist there, who's a teammate, who could be just waiting for a sprint, and that's perfect. He's, he just gets the free run of everyone else struggling. He can just follow, follow, follow right until the end, and hopefully he can win that sprint. Certainly we'll have an eye on that, that's for sure. And... Uh just seeing everybody all together as we come over this section. Andreas Hertz once again sticking himself near the front. As we see a little uh, feather power up being used, maybe it's a little bit of a tactic. You know, with every time we go across the sprint, he gets another spin to see if he can get a better power up that would suit him for the finish. So it, it didn't really do anything. He didn't. There was no attack being used with the feather power up. He was just kind of really getting rid of it while he was in the in the wheels. Jesse Seaman there, Ollie Jones, Lionel, they just seen. Just having a little look at who's in this group now, which is down to 29 riders. And of course, we started with 71, just an indicator of the pace that was on straight away tonight. Such an animated race. These riders knowing each other quite well now, having raced on the uh, 
well, in the world of Zwift so many times now. And here is the standings as they sit currently in the sprints competition. Ollie Jones with eight, Bruce Bird with five, Lionel Vichison with four points, Adam Doug will be also four there, Jesse Seaman with one. And we're just coming up to 300 metres to go as we've got Ollie Jones' stats on the, the leader of the sprint competition at the moment. And this is really going to shoot up now. He's, it's 300 metres, he's still in the wheel, expect it. 250 meters around now. This is when everyone's thinking if, if you've got a parrot, you're going to use it. 200 meters to go. We should see Ollie Jones really light it up, and you do. He's the first one to go. And it, it looks like he's raced against Vujasin, and it looks like Ollie Jones has got perfect time at 1,000 watts, 177 beats per minute. It's, it's a two horse race here, and he's taken the win again. Ollie Jones, perfect timing, and it looks like he might have sewn up that sprint jersey at the same time. It looks that way. We'll get confirmation of that very shortly. But what a ride from Ollie Jones there, just seeing the raw power that he is able to put out. So, so impressive when you look at the watts per kilo being put out here. So it was Ollie Jones, confirmation, taking maximum five points. Lionel Vigerson taking a three there, Fabian Day taking two. And again, they, they got a five-second gap quite easily from going for that sprint. And all that group behind now are going to have to make sure they close the gap. As long as Jones and Vujicin keep pressing on, they should be fine. But as that group comes past, they have to be aware and they have to make sure they get back in because they don't want to just make a big, big effort and then go straight out the back. Absolutely not. It's all about keeping enough powder dry for the end. We're going to have a little look at that point that we saw. The sprint unleashed for the third uh, sprint point of the day. Just see the effort from Ollie Jones there. Brilliant to see. Yeah, over a thousand watts for around 15 seconds there He's on, on a turbo. <laughs> that is really, really high numbers. So, uh, yeah, deserving winner in the sprint competition. Let's hope he's uh, still got those legs for the finish because he's, <laughs> I think, in a, in a strong peloton of 29 at the moment. He's going to need them. Sprint points there. Overall tally, Ollie Jones are leading the way with 13. Lionel Vigison with seven there. Bruce Bird with five. And Adam Duggleby still going for those. He's got four points. Fabian Day with two there. And it looks like an attack there from Beck, who's uh, he's opened up a two-second gap already, which is really good going. It's just one of those sneaky little attacks. He's obviously opened a little tiny gap, and if he really wants to keep pressing on, it might, it might just... It might just grow and grow, but um, it seems look, looking like behind, everyone's quite aware of that, and they're not really letting him just ride off. Chris Beck for dirt there, with 10.5 kilometers remaining um, on lap three or four. Everybody looking to make a move that will suit them to go for this overall victory tonight on the Watopia Cup. Jim McQuaid there, 146 watts, 156 beats per minute, seeing those heart rates go down a little bit from what we saw on the KOM and the sprints, of course. Yeah, this um, this is it now. Ten kilometres to go. Everyone, you, if you if you want to win the race, you, that's all you're thinking about. You want to survive the KOM. You want to let everyone else make it hard, and you just need to follow, follow, follow. And then if you want to make a late attack through the S's after that sprint point, it's the perfect time. So I expect. I expect a lot more people going for this sprint. It'll seem like a lot of people are going for the sprint because they won't want to let three riders just ride off. And if you follow those riders, use them to drag you away, to try and save it, and then you do your max sprint straight after the sprint to try and get a gap. And with 2.8K to go from the bottom of that sprint to the, t to the finish, it's really doable on your own or in a small group. So what is your prediction? Having a look down the field tonight and the people still left in this front group of 29, um, do you expect it to, to whittle down towards the end? Definitely. It's, um, it, it, there's going to be a lot of guys who want to attack. It's not just going to... I don't think 29 riders in a group of 29, 29 aren't just going to want to wait and w wait for a sprint. So uh, I expect a lot of attacks coming up and uh, towards the end, everyone's got, got a chance here. If you're in that group, you've got a chance of winning. So uh, why not risk it? Absolutely right. As we just see the riders come in to lap four of four, of course, the final lap here at the Watopia Cup men's race. What a race we've seen so far. KOM points there. Andreas Hertz, as we come into the final KOM point of the day, he leads with 12, two points ahead of Spencer Segbrook with 10, and Lionel Vigison's got five there as well. Fabian Day's got five as well. Yeah, this is really interesting now. It's definitely it's a two-horse race between Sedgebrook and Hertz for the KOM points. So it, 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 these are the two to watch. We've got Hertz's live power data on the left-hand side of the screen. You just have to keep an eye on that. He's been he's been on it 
and aware every time he's hit this KOM. So I don't expect anything different with the final time up and the final ascent. And he's always watching, always on it, knows what he needs to do, and actually he wouldn't have been too happy with where he came in that last one. So I can imagine him perhaps just pulling absolutely everything out of the bag now on this lap. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Of course, you get over the top, and you, as soon as you hit that KOM, it's 7.7 .7 kilometers to go from the top of the KOM. If, if you're feeling good, and Hertz is obviously climbing really well, this is your chance. If you're a climber, you're going to use this launch pad and this climb to try and break away from the other riders. So I, I expect this time there's going to be a lot of climbers really lighting it up. And we're seeing it yet again. Andreas Hertz unleashing the Hertz, and he is once again leading this one out. Again, yeah, you, you can see everyone's following. And, you, and it looks like a, a feather power-up being used yeah. really early. That's, that's Hertz. He's, it, it's, a, it's a gamble there. If he, if he wants to win the sprint over the top, he, he really needs to use that feather power-up and get a gap. But at the moment, he's used it early, and he's still riding on the front. And you can see Sedgebrook. It's okay. He's used the feather power-up as well. He must have seen Hertz use it, and he's gambled, and he's pressed it as well. Maybe if, if you do see a competitor use their power-up, and you think you can hold it without using the power-up, you want to save it and use that power-up later on, to your advantage, but it looks like uh, they've got over the steepest part of the climb into this false flat, and everyone's kind of backed off again. Andreas Hertz sitting at 548 watts at the moment, 178 beats per minute is his heart rate. Spencer Sedbrook, the uh, 396 watts, 179 beats per minute, and we're just seeing these power numbers just ramp up yet again. Again, yeah, the, the live power data from both the uh, Sedbrook and Hertz. So this is a really interesting time. You can see Hertz in the blue and yellow kit starting to sprint now with just over, th uh, just under 300 meters to go. As we get to the 200 meters, meters to go marker and Sedbrook is just on the back of Devola's wheel. And Devola's really doing Sedbrook a favor here. He's dragging him to the line and, and it was only a two point gap. So if he finishes second, he still wins the KOM jersey. And Sedbrook isn't going to settle for that. He's rolled, he's gone past Devola and he's going to take the win. And he's, he's stolen off Hertz, who looked so strong in the first two. And it's a great ride from Sedbrook. Sedbrook taking it there. Hertz, I think, got third over that uh, final KOM point of the day. And uh, Devola leading it out from the front. Yeah, perfect time from Sedgebrook, and he's he's gone for the final two. He's won the final two sprint, final two KOM points, and that's enough, I think, to for him to take the KOM jersey. Another five points conferred there for Sedgebrook. Fabian Day taking three, and Andreas third there. And again, that, that those five riders kind of got a gap. They've all sat up, and the, the rest of the pelotons come back. Everyone was quite on it there, and aware of what's going on. But if, if, uh, if anyone's got any good legs now, this is kind of the time to use that speed from behind and go straight through. Let's take a look again at that final KOM of the day and uh, just see the point where everybody pounced. So it was Sedbrook that uh, overtook Devola there to take the final KOM of the day. And it was Andreas Hertz who won the first couple. He came in third. Again, yeah, that was great. Um, Great little battle there for the KOM jersey between Sedgebrook and Hertz. Oh, just and one point in it. And Sedgebrook wins it by a point. It's a real <laughs> close battle. And um, of course, Hertz looked like by far the favourite over that first first ascent on the first lap. But um, Sedgebrook consistently in the first two and really used that power to win the final two KOM points and uh, and win the overall. He did certainly looked at what Hertz was likely to do and absolutely went for it. And one, as you say, by one point in it. Very close competition there for those intermediate points. We've got one more sprint to go, and then it will be the big finale here at the Watopia Cup tonight. 6.1 kilometers remaining now on this final lap with that group just whittling down now, as predicted. Yeah, definitely. We've, uh, we had 29 riders at first, but it looks around 25 riders, 26 riders, which is uh, still quite a big group on a tough course like this. So. Um, it, it's all up to play for if you if you if you there's a lot there, I expect there'd be a lot of sprinters but if you want to win and you're a breakaway rider you've still got a lot of chances here mm, 5.9 k to go when are we going to see that happen John it needs to be soon if you if you if you want to win this race you're gonna have to it, it, I think the perfect point after the sprint and then you turn right and you start the S's climb that's the perfect launch pad if you want to try and win from a breakaway so it, it this now, everyone's going to start taking a break, use that time. But um, as you see, Devola's just rolled off the front. It's mm -hmm. only a tiny little gap, but if he really, really realizes he's got a three second, he's got a two second gap, and then he attacks then, 
he's already got that gap. He's opened it up without much trying, without even trying. And then that gap really opens up. So um, it's, it's uh, one of those sneaky little attacks that sometimes really pay off. Yeah, well, it looks to be the case for Fabian Davola making an attack there. He's got about a second there, but as you can see, no one wants to let that go. They don't want the chance of the victory tonight to slip away. So that group of 28 now is 28 strong, and um, it really it's, it's a really hard one to call. I, I talked about James Phillips earlier on in the race. He's riding for Canyon ZCC, and he's a former badminton player, but he's a really strong rider and finished second overall in the uh, National Zwift Champs earlier on in the year. And to be honest, it's, it's one of them when, when we haven't mentioned him and we haven't seen him make any moves, he might be on a really good day and he's just waited and waited and, and he, he could be one of the favourites for the win. That's so often the case, isn't it? And uh, looking at those sprint points, it looks like Ollie Jones has actually clinched that win with 13 points. We've got one more coming up, but he's got a brilliant buffer of a lead there. Yeah, perfect for Jones there. He, he now knows he doesn't need to need to uh, contest this final sprint. And then he can concentrate on the final and try and win that race. So he's obviously one of the strongest sprinters in that group with uh, the sprint he showed over 1,000 watts for 15 seconds. is really, 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 really good. So, um, yeah, J Jones now, he doesn't have to compete in this one. He can say, use that sprint for the final sprint and try and win the race. And that's a really nice position to be in, isn't it, psychologically, uh, to know that you've been able to secure that and now he just needs to sit tight and really hope that he can and bring it back for a sprint at the end. Yeah, and of course, he's um, he, he's an experienced wefter and he, he, he'll know, he'll be fully aware that he doesn't need to sprint now. He, he, he might try the, one of those little sneaky attacks that I was talking about. Maybe everyone will think, oh, he's going for the sprint's jersey and he'll go straight to carry on do a sprint, go over the top and hopefully stay away. You can see this group now. Nobody wants to let anyone get away. We've got one more sprint coming up. Just 3.6 kilometers to go at the Watopia Cup. Of course, this is the final lap now. Everything in for the win. Seeing the data of Ollie Jones there, Alex West, Brett Wakefield, Aaron Coles, 379 watts, 145 beats per minute. Not too crazy. No, this is 145 beats per minute. This is it's going to be a, be a top, bit of respite from the top of that KOM, but it's um, trust me that that, that heart rate's really going to shoot up when they start getting closer to this sprint and then start that run into the finish. As you see, the left hand turn now. The sprint starts here, 300 meters to go. I don't expect anyone to be going for this. If Jones goes for it, and he looks like he's just trying to get the saddle, but maybe he's using that. Hopefully, push someone else out. And he'll uh, he'll go keep. On, I'm expecting him to carry on going with 200 meters to go. He lights it up, but he sits back down, and he starts again. Well, passing the 100 meters to go now in the final sprint point of the day before we get to that all important finish line to go for the win. And we've just seen them cross the line. Let's just confirm who took that. Looks like it was Lionel Vigerson that took it. Yeah, just, um, he was up there in second overall in the sprint competition. But now you can see there's four riders just off the front. They've all been let go because they've been they've been contesting that sprint point. And that little gap, might they, these four could, should carry on. And it looks like Vujasin made the big effort but, and with Beck. And Beck's going over the top. As you see, Van Get over the top of everyone. Perfect timing, just like we said. 12.1 watts per kilo. This is the... This is it. He's, he's got to commit it. He's got to be committed here. 2.3k to go, and he's already opened a three-second gap. Go and Van Gert, the big, big attack. You predicted it. Somebody had to choose the time to go in these closing kilometers, and that is exactly what he did. I mean, 12 watts per kilo we saw unleashed there. Just put that into con context for us. And he's using a, an aero. He's used as well. the aero power-up, and that's he's obviously committed to go for the breakaway solo, and that, that this is the perfect time. He got the gap up the little bit of a drag, and he's used the aero power-up down the downhill to get his speed back up. And it He's, he's going over 50k an hour, and he's going to have to keep going. 6.4 watts per kilo. He's really pressing on now. He's opened up a gap of six seconds on his own, and it, it, it's only back up, just off the front of that group chasing. No one else looks like they're really riding behind. Chris Beck, 8.6 watts per kilo. He's at a distance behind of 5.5 seconds with that big group still pressing on behind. But it is Chris Beck that responds to the attack from Cohen Van Gert there. Yeah, what, Van Get here, 1.5k to go. This is it. He's, he's got her out, but it looks like Beck's really closed it down. 9.8 watts per kilo as he comes across to these two riders, but he's used the draft power up. He's going to take a break. Maybe he's going to ride in the wheel to have a bit of rest, but he needs to go again. That group behind is not far away. 
Well, we have seen the draft used there. Very interesting state of play. We've just over a kilometre to go on this final lap now. So we're going to see this group absolutely chase everything they've got to bring these two riders back, which is indeed what's happening here. We're seeing everything come out of the bag. All the drafts and power-ups that are possibly, you know, still there to be used are being used. And it looks like Sedgwick, the KOM uh, jersey winner, he went on the attack, but it's kind of come back. Rugerson, it starts now with one kilometre to go. It's really now, everyone's in the, it, you're thinking about the right position. They were coming into this really, really fast. It's at 700 metres to go. Van Get with that big attack. I don't expect him to be up there in the finish. As you can see, Cedric, Vujasin, Ollie Jones, the sprint competition, every, all the power-ups are being used. Aero power-up here, left, right and centre. And it's, it's the Killenberg, the killer Killenberg, <laughs> really leading it out with James Phillips coming out. Vujasin, the Canyon ZCC team are really strong. As you can see, all the, look at all those aero power-ups. This is perfect time. You, this is it. Alex West as well. Brad Guevara's winners of both KISS Super Leagues. As you can see, really, really all these aero power-ups all over the place. And it looks like Brad Guevara is really on the front. And it looks like he's taking it. What a finale we just saw. We predicted it all breaking up. But actually, all coming down to a mass sprint to the line there. Well, we knew it possibly could. But wow, what a big group that came in there, all fighting every inch to the line. And we're just awaiting confirmation of that result. But first, let's take a look at the replay of that bunch gallop into the line from that reduced group of around 25 riders. Yeah, and it was a, everyone's got those aero power-ups. They've all saved them, and it looks how close it is on the line. I think it was Brad Gaveras who held on, which is a great ride for me. He, he won a Kiss Super League early on in the, towards the end later round so that sprint he didn't see, we didn't mention him we didn't see him whole race so um he's obviously saved his legs and he saved that sprint and he i think he won it in great style and that's what we say time and time again is some of the riders that are sat in there quietly are the ones that unleash it at the end and it was brad Gaveris of team turbo that did take the victory tonight on the Watopia cup it was uh holden come out that uh, took second there, Ryan Larson, uh, finishing off that podium with uh, James Phillip of Canyon in fourth there. And Soren Bate, who we know took a KOM record previously of a Fusion ECT, he took fifth. Yeah, a great race there. That really um, a great attack coming into the thing for Van Gett. And that, that uh, to be honest, I thought that was it. But um, with the speed, they come down that descent. A group behind is really, really moving fast. And uh, as you can see, Guevara came out of that sprint we didn't mention him at all race, and he saved that sprint and timed it perfectly <laughs> for a really deserving win. That uh, was a deserving win and a really, really tough time out there tonight. <laughs> like, nobody was letting anything go, especially in those uh, closing kilometres, although we saw quite a few riders distance in the beginning. It was all to play for, for that group to the line, and we're just seeing um, a replay of that KOM uh, where we saw it all decided, really, and what a race within a race, and uh, Sedbrook taking it there. Yeah, that was a really good battle for the KOM between Hertz and Sedbrook, and it all came down to one point, and uh, Sedbrook winning the final two KOMs with Hertz winning the first two. It really, um, it was a really good battle, but um, Sedbrook getting the better of Hertz. Yeah, I mean, we saw how much Hertz wanted that, and it came down to one point. A brilliant competition there. Yeah, perfect. It's nearly. Um, Really, really hard. And then, uh, of course, Sedgwick made a big attack coming into the finish as well. So he, he, he hadn't used all his legs just going for the KOM. He still had enough at the end to um, try and win the race, but uh, deserve it when they were a KOM and uh, putting Hertz away in, uh, in great style. <laughs> He'll want to get that one back next time, that's for sure. And another brilliant race within the race was that sprint competition. And this was... Uh, lap three of four, so the third sprint out of the four, and that was Ollie Jones crossing the line there to take a huge buffer, meaning that he was safe for that final sprint. And confirmation overall, Ollie Jones with 15, taking it from Lionel Vigerson with 12 points, and rounding off that sprint podium was Bruce Bird with five points, and Adam Duggleby, a brilliant ride for him tonight as well. And a perfect night for t team turbo tonight i think ollie jones won the ollie jones winning the the uh, sprint um of course cedric winning the kom and then Guevara's finishing off with the race win as well so uh <laughs> they've uh, really dominated tonight with uh, winning every competition they've entered wow 
<laughs> we need to calm down. What a brilliant <laughs> night of racing. Well, that is all from me, Rebecca Charlton, and alongside me, John Mould, in the commentary box. Um, a brilliant Race live here on Zwift, but there is plenty more coming up. You will have seen uh, news of Zwift's latest world. Here's a sneak preview of the UCI World's course in Yorkshire. And from us here, it's bye for now.